What's up my friends and my new friends, welcome back to a brand new video. Today we're going to be talking about Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2, all custom character transformations breakdown, and how to get all of the transformations, all of the custom character transformations in Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. So to start this video off, we're going to go ahead and jump straight into the Super Saiyan transformations. But before we do so, i just like to let you guys know that I will not be discussing in this video the best custom character race uh, in Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. That's going to be in a completely different video. So if you guys would like to watch that and you're new to the channel, please be sure to subscribe, click the mobile notifications, and you'll be able to find out and be the first to watch that video when it comes out. You'll be among the very first people to watch that video. With the transformations, okay? Now all these characters, we're going to go in depth about their transformations, like how to obtain the transformations. So, some of you are probably thinking, Cog, what are you doing, bruh? You can get the transformations, like, right off the bat. Yeah, but, you know, some people don't know this. Some people didn't play the beta. So I'm just going to kind of make this video to give people a better understanding on how to obtain them, you know? The Super Saiyan race, basically, when you start out with your Super Saiyan race, whether it's female or male, you will immediately get your Super Saiyan transformation. But you cannot go, well this was in the beta, you couldn't, in the beta you can't, couldn't go straight into the, uh, you know, the private match lobby or the online lobby and play against other people. This is probably going to be a different case when the full game comes out. But with the sand race, okay, you would you will originally get your Super Saiyan transformation right off the bat. But you won't get your Super Saiyan 2 or your Super Saiyan 3 transformation. I don't know if there's going to be a Super Saiyan God or a Super Saiyan Blue transformation. Or, uh, like, if you can, like, transform into that or a Super Saiyan 4 transformation later on down the road for your custom character. That would be pretty cool. That's probably going to be something maybe in Xenoverse 3 that I'm going to talk about later on down the road. So... For Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2, the Sand Race, once you start out in the beta, you have to go and complete like a series of tasks before you can transform. Now, when the full game comes out, that's going to be a different case. You can probably be able to transform into a Super Saiyan right off the bat and then go in and, and fight people in online PvP or against a comm and be able to transform at will. But you are going to have to acquire... You're going to have to progress further in the game, distribute, implement your boost attribute points into your key, just so you can unlock Super Saiyan 2 and Super Saiyan 3 transformations during online PvP and I believe even parallel quests and such. So, what it's going to take, you have to have three key bars to go from female and male Super Saiyan, from, from their base form to Super Saiyan 1, okay? You have to have at least, you have to have three key bars. And then, to go to Super Saiyan 2, you have to have, I believe it, it's either three or it's four key bars. Now, for Super Saiyan 3, you have to have five key bars. You have to have max key bars to be able to transform into the Super Saiyan 3 transformation. But take note that once you transform into the Super Saiyan 3 transformation, your key doesn't get depleted. You can keep building up more and more key by attacking your opponent and just building up that key to unleash a devastating, incredible ultimate or super attack on an opponent. But when you use an ultimate or a super attack, that key, your key just basically becomes depleted and you have to start over again and start pounding your opponent and building up your key, but you will not lose transformation. But one thing to take into consideration is if your stamina is breaked and you're still a, a Super Saiyan, then you're going to be really vulnerable um, to attack. So be sure to watch out for that. Now, another important feature to th to consider to look at is if you are a Super Saiyan, or you're not even a Super Saiyan, you're in regular base form, and you've built up five keys by beating the shit out of your opponent. Well, you can immediately go to Super Saiyan 3 if you have five key bars filled up. You can immediately go to Super Saiyan 3 at that point just from base form. You don't even need to go to Super Saiyan or Super Saiyan 2. Now, if you're Super Saiyan 1, you already have the three key bars. All you got to do is get two key bars and you can immediately jump to Super Saiyan 3. So that's something really nice. Now, when you're a Super Saiyan, there is an incredible damage boost. Um, it, it, 
just even as Super Saiyan 1, Super Saiyan 2, if you're Super Saiyan 3, there's even a more damage boost increase uh, when you're using ultimate attacks or just like basic attacks by fighting people and punching them, you know, you'll be able to build up and, and incre do more damage, deal more damage to your opponent and it'll speed up the process of you winning the match. Now, that's pretty much male and female Super Saiyans transformations. That's pretty much how to get their, their transformations. Now, like, with their transformations, take note that you, you don't get these transformations by unlocking them through parallel quests. You get these transformations by progressing your character and distributing the boost attribute points into your character's boost attributes into the key section. So now that we've done, and we're, we're completely through with uh, talking about how to obtain the transformations and how to use them for the Super Sans, let's go ahead and talk about another tricky race. We've got the uh, the Frieza race. The Frieza race is really interesting. Now, several of these races, you don't have three transformations. You've just got one. The Frieza race, the Majin Buu race, um, the Earthling race, the Namekian race. The only one that has multiple transformations are the Sands. So the Frieza race. The Frieza race transformation is obtainable right from the start. But to be able to transform, you have to have, I believe it's like three key bars. Not sure if it's five. I didn't get a whole lot of time to test this, but I'm pretty sure it's three. If you get three key bars, you can transform into your, your you can turn golden into like a golden Frieza-like um, custom character, which is really nice. I think the, the golden transformation for your Frieza race is really spectacular and spot on, spot on. It's really attractive. I really like the way it looks. It's incredible and sensational. It's great. Great transformation. The damage boost is amazing. And the freezer race is really great for combos. So if you are a freezer race, you can immediately transform and turn golden right upon from the beginning. And he's the best for combos. If you if you want to go in and do combos um, with any custom character, the freezer race is the race to go. Now, now that we're done with the freezer race, no, well, actually, no. Back to the freezer race just for a little bit. The freezer race. Um, it, it's good to distribute your boost attribute points, uh, you know, when you level up, you get boost attribute points, it's good to distribute those boost attribute points into, like, fighting, like, basic attacks and key and stamina, because basic attacks and stamina are gonna be really important in this game, because everybody's just gonna be watching your stamina, watching your key, and taking advantage of that when your stamina and your key is just, like, depleted, and they're just gonna, like, if they're a higher level player than you are and they have more experience in fighting games, they're gonna tear your shit up. So let's go ahead and move out of the freezer race. Now we're gonna jump into the Namekian race. For the Namekian race, you need to have five key bars in order to transform into your giant state. So, what to take into consideration, what you should take into consideration about the Namekian race is once you transform, you're going to be able to do so much damage to your opponent just with basic attacks. So if you're going to choose the Namekian race, go ahead and implement all of your boost attribute points that you get from leveling up into your basic attacks, and also be sure to do so into your stamina, because once you transform into a giant Namekian, your stamina is going to deplete itself, and once it depletes itself, you're going to lose transformation, and you're going to be very vulnerable to attack. So be on the lookout for that, because there is a weakness with the Namekian race, with the Boo race. It's You just really got to take... You gotta be careful, guys. You gotta be careful with these transformations, especially if you be if you're a, an Earthling race and you get on the Nimbus and an opponent manages to knock you off of the Nimbus. You're kind of a little bit vulnerable to attack. So just be on the lookout. If you're a Namekian race, you need five key bars in order to transform into a giant Namekian. So let's go ahead and dive into the Earthling race. For the Earthling race, you need three key bars in order to summon the Nimbus, call the Nimbus to your location, get on it with the power pole, and just start beating the hell out of your opponent with the power pole extend and just flying around on the Nimbus. It's a lot of fun, but it's got one weakness. That weakness is, is when your opponent attacks you from behind, he can knock you off the Nimbus, and then you gotta wait a while to summon the, call the Nimbus again, which, you know, it doesn't sound like that long of a wait, but when, you're up, when your stamina is depleted and your opponent has the upper hand on you, and you're left really vulnerable and he's doing so much damage to you, then you're just really screwed and in a tight situation, like, you're thinking to yourself, am I 
I going to win this battle? Am I going to lose? I cannot lose this battle. I have to win. So it all depends, you know, it, whether you guys want to choose a, an Earthling race, a Namekian race, a Freezer race, or a Sand race. Now let's go ahead and jump out of the Earthling race and talk about the final race, the Majin Buu race. Now the Majin Buu race is really awesome. I really like the Majin Buu race, but my favorite race is probably the Sand, tied between the Sand and the Freezer race, just because there aren't a whole lot of weaknesses between those two races. But the Namekian race is all right too. It's just the part that I hate is when that stamina gets depleted and you're just left vulnerable and you're waiting to build up your key again to transform again and deal more damage. But with the Majin Buu race, you need three key bars just like the Earthling race and the Freezer race to go into your transformation. Now the Majin Buu race is going to go into like a Kid Buu looking transformation, an Evil Buu, and he's going to be able to just like... Um, deal so much damage with his ultimate attack like the super vanishing ball so much damage can be inflicted and it's just ridiculous but it's another weakness like the Namekian weakness when you with with the Namekian when he transforms into a giant Namekian and then his stamina becomes depleted over time while in that transformation and then his stamina is just trying to recover and he's just kind of like uh, paralyzed for a moment he's stunned and your opponent can use that to his advantage to take advantage of you and just obliterate you with a series of combos and attacks now with the boo race it's like the similar thing because once you transform your stamina while you're in the transformation your stamina becomes depleted and you're just like really screwed once that stamina runs out and your character isn't transformed anymore and he's, she, he or she is just temporarily stunned and your opponent can just destroy you. So it really depends, you know, like with the Boo race, the ultimate attack does a lot of damage. I don't know if Bandai's gonna change it up last minute where you have to go through a series of steps to get these transformations like Super Saiyan 1, turn golden, go into a giant Namekian, summon the flying Nimbus or transform into a, a di multi-color, different color like Kid Boo transformation. So I don't know if they're gonna change it up last minute to where you have to unlock like go through a series of like um, tutorials to unlock these transformations but anyway guys that's all I have for you guys today if you enjoyed this video please give it a big thumbs up subscribe to our mobile notifications on share this video follow me on Twitter all the links and information are in the description below this video if you're watching it on mobile if you're watching it on computer thank you guys so much for taking the time or today to watch this video I greatly appreciate it let me know in the comment section below what race you're going to choose and play as in Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 with all that being said guys I hope you enjoyed Please keep living life to the fullest every single day. Live positive and enjoy life. Peace. You guys take it easy.